Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. Plastic products are rife in fast-paced Hong Kong, where convenience is everything, but they can wreak havoc to the environment. As producer Yvonne Liu reports, the sorry sight of plastic-plagued beaches has prompted concerned citizens to take matters into their own hands. Environmentalist Tracy Reed and her family live in Discovery Bay, near San Pakwan. I love the beach. I want to be able to bring my kids down here to a safe, clean beach so we can play, watch the turtles and, and the birds. Since moving here eight years ago, they often strolled on beaches across the city. You do find, you know, everything from life jackets, um, industrial stuff, There's uh, everything. I don't know where this shoe has washed up from. We do see a lot more trash in the summer, and that is because there is more beachgoers. But uh, the trash left on the beach uh, compared to the trash that washes in is quite small. This is the collection point because of the currents. The family hails from Australia. We do have trash on the beach in Australia, but some of the beaches here, the, the quantities was mind-boggling. Sometimes it's almost knee-deep with the level of trash. That was a real shock and, and a wake-up call. That was six years ago. Tracy organized her first beach cleanup when a friend started the conservation group Discovery Bay Green. It's just one person walking on the beach and picking up some trash, it doesn't make a difference. But when you've got a whole group of people together, you can make a really big difference. About 70 people joined. It was very successful and we had such a lot of enthusiasm. People saying, oh, when's the next one? When's the next one? It's like, oh, OK. So one beach cleanup led to another. Hong Kong has 41 Gazetta beaches. The Leisure and Cultural Services Department cleans up at least twice a day. San Pak Wan is one of the countless non-Gazetta beaches in Hong Kong. The Food and Environmental Hygiene Department claims its in-house and contract cleaners sweep up non-Gazetta beaches, some daily, some half-yearly. San Pak Wan is cleaned weekly now, three years after Tracy and volunteers started their work. Typhoon Vincenti hit Hong Kong in July 2012, sweeping into the sea six shipping containers of plastic pellets. Tracy was among the first to discover them. So I did go down to the beach that day to look specifically for plastic pellets. And when I got to the beach and the whole beach was covered, it was wow. 150 tons of plastic pellets had spilled onto 10 Hong Kong beaches, including Discovery Bay. This is the raw plastics. Anything plastic starts off in this fashion, like our plastic water bottles, our polyester clothing. Some of these pellets are treated with uh, chemicals, so they can be potentially toxic on their own. When, uh, when they are left in the sea, plastic act as like a sponge for the chemical pollutants. Some can have uh, concentrations of chemicals a million times more than the surrounding seawater. When you do have a fish that eats a piece of toxic plastic, the chemicals do transfer from the plastic into the tissues of the fish. For me, that's, that's really scary. An assortment of living creatures might ingest the plastic waste and sometimes... Not being able to pass it because their mouths are a lot bigger than the other end, so once it's inside them, it's stuck there. And clearing the waters of plastics is difficult. We've put so much plastic in there and so much chemicals that it's hard to, to get them all out. Last year, Tracy, a former nurse, started the non-profit Plastic Free Seas to raise awareness of the use and disposal of plastics. Well, it's a full-time job for her, pretty much, trying to uh, encourage corporates to change the way they do things and to liaise with the government to try and explain to them perhaps that this is also a big problem in Hong Kong. The reason for plastic uh, specifically is, is primarily the longevity of it. Plastic is designed to last for, you know, decades, um, potentially hundreds of years. 
plastic cigarette butts as our um, plastic. The toxic plastic filters take five to ten years to break down. Here. Lollipop sticks, we see these a lot. Bottle caps. Last year, Plastic Free Seas and Discovery Bay Green built this cleanup station. When we left plastic bags and gloves and equipment for people to use, people were cleaning the beaches and uh, people leave uh, bags of trash. And this is all man-made trash. Unless we change our behaviour, we're going to be cleaning our beaches forever. Disposable utensils and containers are commonly found on the beach. How easy is it to carry a fork in your bag and reuse it? This netting is a, it's so light. If you put it in the bin, you know, the chances of it um, flying out and ending up on the beaches is really high. Styrofoam is so plentiful. It's very frustrating. It blows, it floats. Uh, you know, it just hangs around the whole beach. We can find alternative sources for carrying food. Tracy brings home trash to identify trends. It's a bit like a, being a detective. Once you get it all together, you can get a good picture of uh, where it's coming from. This is potentially um, a death sentence for a, a marine animals. We find uh, a lot of these little cups washing up on the beaches, and we found a lot of these dragon-shaped ones. They deduce they are dumped or washed into the sea after offerings done in temples by the sea. We find a lot of medicine packets. See a lot of syringes by the hundreds on the beach. We plotted where these doctor surgeries were. A lot were near typhoon shelters or near ports. It wasn't until we found a lot of these connected with rope that we realised that this was uh, being used by fishermen as an anchor source. People have dump it in the sea because once it's in there, it's nobody's ownership and you can't trace it easily. It's, it's the out of sight, out of mind type mentality. And plastic toys strewning beaches lure kids to the cause. Kids don't want to look at rubbish. And, but if you've, got, uh, if you've got toys, then they can start asking questions like, ah, I had one of those, and, uh, but why is that ending up on the beach? Animals. Hey, I know this guy. Who is it? Diego. I wonder what Diego was doing on the beach. His head is stuck in the ice. <laughs> and his bum is showing. No. We're not instilling them a sense of pride and ownership in their toys. It's, the kids play with them down on the beach and uh, they get lost, they break, but it doesn't matter. And I think this is a real disservice to our children. Can I have this? Yes, you can. Do you not like sorting the garbage? Or... No, really. It's yucky. So, Evie, how, how many beach cleanups have you been to? One thousand. <laughs> it feels like a thousand, doesn't it? What's the most exciting part about a beach cleanup to you? <laughs> but you often find lots of interesting things, don't you? Like Mummy will say, today go and find only bottle caps, and you'll get a bucket and you'll just go and pick up bottle caps. I've been to many beach cleanups, um, many, many beach cleanups. When the kids were smaller, uh, it would be my job to sort of stop them from hurting themselves on the beach. But now they're a bit older, yeah, we all get in and we, and we clean. I got the t-shirts. I don't have Great, thank you. On this day, Plastic Free Seas kick-started its first beach cleanup of the year. So what we're doing also today is um, collecting bottle caps. Um, one of the schools is doing an art project. You might want to take a few bags. Um, the Marine Department will come to collect uh, the trash um, tomorrow morning. We'll bring the grey bags back over for recycling, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. So. I'm Charlie. And I'm Billy, and we're here um, to um, to um, stop um, pollution um, uh, in the on the beaches. What kind of trash do you find? Um, Normally plastic. Like, 
plastic and foam. They learn about uh, the damage plastic is doing to the environment and they realise that what they're learning at school is actually happening out here. Well, I'm very proud of them. I'm personally shocked to see you. I am actually. The biohazard stuff, that's just quite scary. There's a lot of glass here as well. The situation is probably better in Europe. We have a lot of regulation over there. You simply can't pollute beaches uh, the same way as happens here. In Hong Kong, anyone dumping refuse into the sea can be fined $1,500 under the Public Cleanliness Offences Ordinance or be liable to a maximum fine of $10,000 and six months in jail under a summary offences ordinance. The Marine Department prosecuted three cases of marine littering in 2012 and 11 in 2013. All were convicted. Kids don't really check if there's any Oh, is there a syringe on this beach or something? They just go and run around and play. So we sort of have to clean it up for them. Yeah, this a is a crab. crab. It was stuck between two, two rocks. rocks. And there was, yeah, there was a plastic bag over it. If you go down to the rocks, there's a lot, a lot of trash. Yeah. Once they're left in the sun, it just becomes really brittle. So this is much easier to take one bottle off the beach than to take a thousand tiny pieces. We're finding all of this microplastic now is, uh, is covering the surface of the sea. We can see all the bite marks here on the ends as well. So lots of little fish, bigger fish are all eating this. People need to be responsible for what they use and make sure that it's put somewhere securely, not in an overfull rubbish bin where, you know, the chance of this blowing out is really high. She notes another problem is lack of garbage bins on Hong Kong beaches. Leisure and Cultural Services says all Gazetta beaches have sufficient rubbish bins and they're emptied by its cleaners at least twice a day or once they're full. When we come back... Do not open this. One woman's art is another's waste. I use color and order to have a different perception of waste. They strive to save marine creatures victimized by plastic pollution. Stay with us.